Good morning, everybody. Welcome back. Um, my name is Alan Hudart. I'm another consultant at Thurgood. So I'm really <laughs> going to pick up from where Siraj left off and just show you another storytelling option in a new product that Trevor mentioned in his opening speech around ClickSense. Um, so ClickSense is the new self-serve tool from Click. Um, so for those of you familiar with Click, Click View, this is a much more self-serve, user-driven, um, intuitive dashboarding tool. Um, so you can really make visualizations very quickly and easily. Um, the desktop version is free from click.com. Um, so everything that you see here today has been done in uh, ClickSense desktop. So you can download this and do this all to yourself. There's also a server version available for enterprise <coughs> deployments. Uh, it has the same powerful in-memory architecture as ClickView, so you get the same very fast experience on large amounts of data. Um, there's a new API engine which has been opened up so you can actually uh, create your own visualizations and extensions to ClickSense, and it's very easy to adapt existing ClickSense objects, so you can really make visualizations that are custom and suit your needs. Um, it will render in any device which renders in HTML, so there's very little work in transitioning your dashboards from desktop to mobile or from Windows to an iOS operating system. And the feature that we're going to focus on today is the storytelling feature, which is also new to ClickSense. So if you just very quickly look at what would be a typical click view architecture, um, we start with all of our different data sources at the bottom here, and then we extract these into files known as QVD files. For those of you not familiar, these are just data files which have been optimized to be loaded into click view. Um, from those, you can then create a data model or a transformation layer using the ETL tool that's part of ClickView, and then those, those will act as the source or the feed into your dashboards. <coughs> and if you look at how that would change in ClickSense, you can see there's very little difference in between those. Um, you can take all the same data sources, extract those into the same QVD files. <coughs> the only thing that's different is you're putting ClickSense on top rather than ClickView. Um, even the script to load them into the dashboard is the same. So the only thing you actually need to change are the visualizations on top. And that really goes back to what Siraj was talking about before the break um, with data, visualize, story, and design. This is really one tool that allows you to do all four of those things. You can pull in your data and transform it with ClickSense. You can build the visualizations um, using um, the dashboarding tool. And then using the storytelling feature, you can design your story around that as well. Um, so I, as a demonstration of this, I'm going to pick up um, from 1985, the, the history of oil prices, so from where Siraj left off. And so in case you hadn't already noticed, I'm not in PowerPoint at the minute. I'm actually in the storytelling feature of ClickSense. Um, so this is a slides deck that I've pulled <coughs> together, we've brought in my own images and text. Um, and as we move on to the first story, you can see I've brought in some of the visualizations that already exist in my ClickSense dashboard. So the first one that we have at the bottom here is showing the trend of oil prices across time. So we're starting at 1980 and running through to 1999. And I've added the feature in of highlighting the point in time that I want to focus on. So that really allows me to draw any um, viewers' attentions to the specific piece of data that I want to talk about. But it also gives you the wider picture and the context around that number, where if you'd have just said 14.3, you wouldn't really know what that was in relation to anything else. So this slide is all about, um, in 1986, a real ramping up of production um, of oil by <coughs> Saudi Arabia and the effect that that had on the oil price. So to show this, I've got a very simple bar graph um, showing the difference in oil production by Saudi Arabia between 1985 and 1986. And again, I've just highlighted the number to give that context around it. And you can see that that's quite a big difference in the two years. And then in the context, in a wider context of the top three oil producing nations at the time, the US, Russia, and Saudi Arabia, you can see on the stacked bar on the left that Russia and the USA stay around the same between 1985 and 1989, and it's Saudi Arabia that really is fluctuating in that production levels. So one of the beauty of the tools that we're showing to you today is that you get the static reporting like this, which you could create in PowerPoint, but then you've never been in a presentation where no one's asked a question, so you've gotten the ability now to then go into the dashboard and find answers to any questions that could be asked. In ClickSense, the way you do that is simply by right-clicking on any chart and going to source. So what's that done it, um, is taken the chart that we had and gone into the dashboard that we've taken that snapshot from. So this is the copy of the chart that we've just gone through at the bottom, but we can also see all of the other facts and figures that we had in our dashboard originally. 
So for example, um, the fact that I might want to pull out of this is that Saudi Arabia's reserves account for almost 16% of the worldwide oil reserves, compared with 5.5 and 2.5 for Russia and the US, respectively. So that means that Saudi Arabia can really afford to ramp up production at certain times or throttle down because they have so many reserves available. So once I've done that extra bit of analysis in my dashboard, I can just click at the top and I'm back into my presentation and we can carry on to the next section. So the next big event <coughs> to hit the oil prices around here was the first Gulf War. As you can see, lots of exciting, happy stories to get you reinvigorated after the break. Um, so we see that the price has risen up now to $23 per barrel. And um, we've got another chart at the top um, showing the same prices, but on a monthly level. And the two areas we really want to focus on are uh, this peak at the top and then why it dropped again down at the bottom. So I've highlighted those peaks and troughs using this KPI feature here. Um, so the story behind this is that um, around this time there was a lot of tension and apprehension with uh, the Iraqi invasion of Kuwait and the potential repercussions of the US retaliating. Um, so that is why there was a huge increase in the oil price around the time as people got more and more worried around production facilities and wells in the area and whether oil pumping and oil production could continue at the same rate. And the reason that there's then this trough at the end was as US airstrikes started against uh, Iraq, it became apparent that oil production and oil wells would not be affected. Production would carry on as normal, so there was no reason to panic. Everything can calm down again and get back to the level that it was. Um, so if we move on to the final slide that we're going to show, um, this is simply a case of a big increase in consumption of oil at the time, which led to a huge reduction in spare capacity of oil production facilities around the time. Now, I've left a big blank space in there for a reason, as Sir has left his blank slides, because I want to show you just how easy it is to create something in ClickSense. So if I come out of my story now, I'm actually going to go into my application overview. So here we can see all of the different dashboards that I've created previously. I'm just going to make a new one for you, call it Alan Sheet. And if we go into this, um, so this is our blank dashboard. Um, at the top here, we see there's already a filter on year. I'm just going to change that. I don't want any of these years selected because the time period I'm actually going to focus on is <coughs> from 2000 all the way through to 2009. So once we've made those selections, any other selections would also be displayed at the top here, or we could just close them and get rid of them as well. I'm going to start editing the sheet. So um, a very similar layout to a lot of other visualization tools that are out there now. Um, we've got all the different objects that we can pull in on the left here. So what I'm trying to show with this visualization is how there was an increase in consumption and how that led to a reduced amount of spare capacity. So to do that, I'm just going to drag and drop a combination chart and we can resize that to be any size that we want to fit our dashboard. I can very quickly add in the year as a measure, and the first other, sorry, the year as a dimension, and the first measure I'm going to add is the amount of spare capacity that was available at the time. So you can see that um, rather than having to know what language and code that ClickSense uses, there was just a wizard, a few very simple clicks, and I've brought that in. I can spend a little time cleaning this up and just renaming um, the measure that I've brought in, if I can remember how to spell. And again, <coughs> so that's showing me the spare capacity changing over years. I wanted to add in the um, changing consumption as well, so I'm just going to add a new measure and show the sum of oil consumption. To make that a little clearer, I'm just going to change that into a line chart and put it on a separate axis. And we'll just change the name of that measure as well. I can add a title to the chart. Can't spell again. And there we go. So obviously you would spend some more time building up your dashboard, adding in all of the different objects that you'd want to. I'm just going to take that. And the way that I now get this chart into my storyboard is simply by right clicking on it and taking a snapshot. So that's just taking a copy of this chart as it is with all the filters as they are applied at the minute. So it allows you to focus any of the charts or visualizations down into the context that you want to give them before exporting them into your story. So to get back into my story now, I can just look at the top here and choose the story I want to work with. I'm going to go back to the sheet that I want to work on, and I have my snapshot library here. 
So any snapshots that I've taken of um, charts in the past will all be listed here. This is the only one I've done today, so I just drag and drop it in, resize it, and we're done. So as you see, all of the other options, so text, images, things like that, are also available on the right in the menu here. I'm just going to get back into presentation <coughs> mode. So now, hopefully, we can see that there's quite a big increase in consumption from 2000 all the way through to 2007. And that really reduced the amount of spare capacity that was available in the industry. So that had lots of oil producers worrying that they weren't be going to be able to meet demand, um, <laughs> which really started uh, this big, steep rise in the oil price that we see here, um, all the way up until around 2007, 2008. Now, that's where it gets a bit complicated. So I'm going to leave that for Siraj to explain to you after in his final session. If you do have any questions, feel free to come and talk to me um, after the demonstrations or get in touch using the details on there. And now I'm going to hand over to Julia.